that discussion with you about what that can look like. Um, I've spoken with a couple of you about doing so. Wouldn't it be nice to have some music uh, in addition to over the speakers? That's great. Uh, something in addition to maybe live music, someone to play the piano or the organ uh, right before the service or right after. That would be great as well. So I would love to, uh, I would love to have that. Keep messing with my earpiece. It's not sitting well. Uh, I was given a note while I was over at the, the school. Uh, there is the reminder that Jim Dorgan passed away last month. Uh, actually, February 12, uh, 10, he passed away. So if you know Jim or his family... Uh, I'm sure you all do. Um, it would be great to reach out to the to the family during this time. Uh, let them know that you are there to support uh, in whatever way, whatever way possible. Uh, some other church business to uh, talk about. Uh, Judy, uh, Joyce, excuse me, Joyce Beegler. I have these names. Joyce Bredemeyer, sorry. <laughs> yes, Joyce Bredemeyer is requesting membership transfer from Pendleton uh, to Pilot Rock. This is second reading. So do we have a motion to accept that membership transfer? We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? And it is moved. We, uh, second point of business, we have some uh, worthy students, college worthy student fund uh, with this church that uh, would be good to continue to uh, support. We have a couple of students or a few students going to Walla Walla and they have requested some funds. So we need to continue to, to help support that fund uh, wherever the Lord or however much the Lord uh, uh, touches you you to 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 support uh, to do that. Thirdly, we are looking for a church secretary. Uh, it was good to have Judy uh, help and fill that that role with the church. She has put in her uh, resignation, and so now we have the um, begrudging opportunity to. Uh, to, uh, to replace or to have someone fill that role. So if you know somebody, please send them my way and I will give the documents um, to them, uh, application to fill out and, and all that stuff. We'll go through that process. It, and, and finally, March 20th, I would like to have a, a, a communion. Uh, we'll do the juice and we'll do the bread. Um, we'll save the foot washing for the future sometime. But I would love to do a, a communion service. So the bread and the juice, and we'll talk a little bit on that Sabbath um, about communion. And so we'll go through that service. I'd love to do it March 20. So please uh, keep that in mind and come uh, prepared. They say it's important to, if you come to the altar and you remember um, someone who sinned against you or has ought against you to go and make it right. Um, so we want to give some time before that uh, communion service to go and talk with and get things sorted out so when you come you can you can come and uh, get things right with the Lord as well um, so communion March 20 we will be doing that and finally I would love to welcome you uh, both here in the in the sanctuary as well as those who are watching online, I'd love to, to welcome you 
Uh, it's good to, to have you here to participate and to uh, be here to fellowship. Before we go any further, uh, I would like to uh, have a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, it's good to be here. It's good to spend time with people who love you, who follow you. I pray that your spirit is here guiding and directing. Lead me, guide me, the words that I say, the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. Those who are here, those who are in the pew as well as listening online, I pray for them as well. That the words that they hear and the meditations on their heart be acceptable to you as well. I pray that you lead us, teach us, guide us through your word this morning. Again, I ask that your spirit is here, guiding and directing us this morning. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In our discussion, do you remember what book we're going through? We're going through 1 Peter. In the past, uh, we've spoken, uh, 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 we've gone through Ephesians, we've gone through Jonah, we've gone through Colossians, all wonderful books. I've started in the book of First Peter. I love each one of the books. I think that they are really, really important to the world in which we're living and our perspective. I want to take you to the furnace. I would love to go with you and look at the, the forger's cauldron, if you will. We go out with our basin. We go out with our shovel to the creek, to the river, to the caves, and we, and we mine gold. It's still in its uh, rough state. But we get it and we put it in a pan or we put it in a, in a chamber or container and we bring it back to, to be processed. And as we introduce it to the flame, that flame begins to melt down the gold. And as it melts, you add to it in order to get rid of it in order to get rid of impurities, you add to it borax, you add to it soda ash. In order to separate the impurities, you heat it up to, to take out the impurities. You add these ingredients, borax and soda ash, to help separate the gold from, yes, impurities, but also other metals as well. So finally, as you, as you look in, you can scrape off the top things that have reached the surface. And then you take this molten metal, this molten gold, and you, you pour it into a container. You pour it into a basin or a bowl. You pour it into something that can stand the heat. You pour it in and you let it cool. Going through this process, as you go through this process, you will then have 24 karat gold that, while was valuable to begin with, it was valuable when you pulled it out of the ground, now that you have it in 24 karat gold state, it is much more valuable. It's soft it's malleable and you're able to make things out of it very 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 valuable in the same way friends Christians today are being refined refined by the trials of life we're being we're being made we're being made ready to one day meet God face to face 
there's a statement a wise man once said my child when when you come to serve the lord prepare prepare yourself for trials friends some christians practice friends this morning some speakers some preachers propose the idea that once you proclaim that you believe Jesus Christ, your world will be filled with success. Your world will be filled with smooth sailing. But as much as we'd love for that to happen, as much as we'd love that idea to be a reality, nothing, friends, could be further from the truth. Today, do you face trials? As you look at your life, do you face challenges? January 2014, we had just met and put my grandmother to rest. January 2014. It was something that we knew would happen something that we knew and we had prepared that it would happen. My mom and dad were retired in Missouri, living in Salem, and they had been taking care of her for a number of years. Well, laid her to rest, and then they began to plan. What were they going to do? Where were they going to go? Who they were going to see? July 2014, I got a phone call early, early in the morning from my mom. And she says, got up this morning and your father's fallen in the laundry room. What should we do? And I said, go, go to the hospital. This is not something that should, should normally happen. And so they went into the hospital and she began to, he began to talk about the things that they had been experiencing. Bleeding, um, heart issues. December, December 14, 2014, we were laying my father to rest. He was diagnosed with cancer. Cancer, more than just in a, you know, in a uh, one area of his body, but all throughout cancer. First of the year, laying my grandmother to rest. The end of the year, we were laying my father to rest. Trials. Do you face trials today? What kind of trials do you face today? Marcus Aurelius says, The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Therefore, guard yourself accordingly and take care that you entertain no notions unsuitable for, to virtue and reasonable nature. What does that mean? As I look at my challenges and I look at my struggles, as I look at my, my trials, it's easy to get sucked into those. Right? It's easy to get sucked into all the trials and all the things that we're being afflicted, the things that we're, that we're faced on a day-to-day -day basis. And as I look at the death of my father and, and then trials post, it's easy, friends, to get lost in the trial. James chapter 1. If you have your Bibles, I would invite you to open your Bible to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, and I'll read verse 2, two through 4. Despite your trials, 
there is a message that is for us. There is a message that is for me today. James chapter 1, starting with verse 2. Consider it pure joy. I love, friends, I love the New Living Translation, and that's where I'm reading from today. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Do we count it all joy to face trials? No, we don't. But according to James, what happens when we face trials with joy? According to James, what, what is the, the result? Perseverance. Perseverance produces what? Let, let perseverance finish its work, work so that you may be what? Mature and complete. Do I run from my trials? Sometimes it's easy to do that. Sometimes I would rather not face my trials. But facing my trials produces what? According to James. Produces what? Produces maturity and completeness doesn't. Yeah, it's so much easier to run from my trials. But running from the trials does not produce maturity, does it? No. Now let's go to to Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1 1 through 5, I believe there's a reason why Peter begins his book the way he does. I I believe Ephesians begins the way it does. I begin I believe he, he begins that book for a reason that way. I believe as we look into Colossians, he starts the book of Colossians that way for a reason. First Peter chapter 1, 1 through 5 introduces us to a message. And because of that message, we are then able to face our trials. What is the message in First Peter 1, 1 through 5? What is it? Do you remember? You're chosen. And because you're chosen we're able to face the trials. Why? As a chosen person. What is our response? We're called to face our trials with joy. Is it easy? No. It's not easy. Take you uh, just briefly. I was thinking about this on the way uh, to the school this morning. Um, Paul, uh, Paul faced trials, didn't he? Paul faced trials. Second Corinthians eleven twenty-two through twenty-five. Really twenty-two through uh, twenty-eight. I'll read a little bit here. This is Paul speaking. 2 Corinthians 11, starting with verse 23. Are they servants of Christ? I know 
I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. I have worked harder, been put in prison. So these are trials that Paul is facing. I've been put in prison more often, been whipped times, uh, been whipped times without number, and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with, with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I've traveled many long journeys. I've faced dangers with, from rivers and from robbers. Trials. Uh, Paul faced trials didn't he? He was intimately aware of trials, facing dangers from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked long and hard, endured many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Then besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. These are trials faced by Paul every day. And he calls us to have joy. He calls us to have joy. Go back. Jesus Jesus calls us today in John 16, the very last part of verse 33. He gives us a word of encouragement. John 16, 33. It says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Friends, I don't know what burdens you're having today. I don't know what trials you're facing today. But we know John, 17, John 16, Jesus is saying, in this world you will face trials. There is that guarantee. You will face trials whether you're all alone in your home, whether you've not been visited by family, by friends, by whomever, alone facing cancer. Whatever your trial is today, Jesus gives a word, in this world you will have trouble. That is a guarantee. But despite those troubles, take heart. Take heart. Why? Because Jesus has overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. So we pick it up in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Peter is telling us now, Jesus, James, Paul, all are telling us, this same, same message. Peter also rep repeats this message to us today. 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 6. So be truly glad. Why are we called to be truly glad? We have joy ahead, yes, but we can also look into the beginning of that book and find out what Jesus is to me and the work that he's done, Right? So, be truly glad because of what Jesus did on the cross, because what Jesus has done here on earth, because of what Jesus has done in your life, so be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. Your faith is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. 
though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So, so when, when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him. Even though you've never seen him. Though you've never seen him, you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward by trusting him will be what? Will be salvation of your soul. Friends, do you believe that? I'd like to share with you a song this morning. It's going to work.
message should be more than just about us. Right? There should also be a what next. Jesus calls us to uh, an, a what next. Uh, if you would turn in your Bibles to Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. This is my ne what next. This is your what next. Matthew chapter 5. For the Christian, one who's committed their life to Jesus Christ, one who has Jesus living in and through, friends, this is our what next. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, or 43 through, through 45. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and, and hate your, your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Friends, what, are, what trials do you face today? That you, friends, may be sons and daughters of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Christianity, I believe, is not just about me. Christianity, I believe, is not just about us. Christianity, I believe, is not just about you. The whole gospel demands a response. It, it demands it. If the gospel is just about me, then it's not the gospel. There is always a response. And that response is another. It is not something that I can cook up. I cannot love those who hate me. I cannot love and do what Jesus is calling me to do. It's only Jesus. But we are called to, to love your enemy. Bless those who, who curse you. And do good for those, to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Let's be real right now. Suppose, friends, if Matthew eighteen or Matthew chapter five were were understood and and implemented, what would January six look like? Remember what happened January 6th? January 6th, let's storm the Capitol. Let's storm the, cast, the Capitol. Jesus saves. Let's storm the Capitol. Suppose Matthew chapter 5, the whole chapter really, was really implemented into our lives. What would it look like? 
would we storm the capital? Probably not. Would we seek out to kill and destroy those who maybe we didn't agree with politically? No, we wouldn't. Jesus was laying on a cross before it was pile-drived into the ground. And they were putting nails through his hands and his feet. He didn't have a sign. He wasn't marching around saying, you're treating me unfairly. You didn't count my vote. He didn't do that, did he? He didn't do that. The creator of the universe, the one who spoke and the word went out and created, had every right in the world in the universe to stand up and say, you're being unfair. Right? You're being unfair, but what did he do? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Friends, it's, it's hard. I guarantee life is not going to be easy. But the road that we're called to walk doesn't have a picket sign. It just doesn't. It doesn't have a you're treating me unfairly sign. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. It has a, a sign yeah, it has a sign. Jesus had a sign up above him, kind of making fun of him. But the sign is a sign of service, isn't it? I invite you to go read Matthew 5, the whole thing. That's our call. That's our call. So where are you today? Where am I today? I don't want to face my trial. I don't. But Jesus calls us to. He, he says, count it all joy, doesn't he? He says, count it all joy. Face your trials with joy. Right? Because Jesus already walked that path. Jesus already walked that path. So where are you today? Do you have a picket sign? Put it down. Do you have a I can't or won't? Put it down. Jesus calls us to do. Let's pray. Father in heaven, the life that you live was a life outside of yourself. You, you, you didn't demand your rights. You, you didn't demand fair treatment. You, you walked the path that was laid out before you. And you forgive them, you forgave them while you did it. It's stirring, it's humbling, but you call us to the same path. Whether it's the pastor, whether it's the deacon, whether it's the elder, whether it's a church member called to, to go and reach the community. Each one of us has a row that we're called to work. Face our trials because you face them too. What does it mean to count it all joy? Father, you can teach us, so show us. Work in us 
because we know that he that's begun a good work will complete it. Work through us as we go into the community despite what we face, despite what's going on in our, in our lives. Go with us now. Not for our sake, but for your sake. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.